Hi, everyone. Uh, I will first say a few words about OntoText, but I will gratifyingly assume that at least half of you may know OntoText. And then uh, this is a position paper. So it's not think about that something that we have achieved. It's more like, is the right question, is semantic, data, semantic interoperability ready for industrial data? I think the right question is, how can each of us try to accelerate this and get that to a ready stage? Because I think that data spaces can gain a lot more from semantics than they currently do. Okay, so a few words about OntoText. Uh, it's been working in semantic technologies for about 22 years. I've listed mostly clients that we have in the industrial domains, even though the majority of our clients are in other domains, life sciences, in publishing, and so on. Also, we are maybe Bulgaria's most successful participant in European research. You see on the next slide, kind of like a timeline of our projects. We partner, we have been, we have built a very strong partner program in the last three years or so. So we have maybe over 50 partners both semantic companies, also knowledge management companies, large IT consultants, and so on. I think this, is, this has been a very important piece of our success. And an um, interesting piece of news on to text is, uh, or is just about to be acquired for about 30 million euro. So that's, I hope, some good news for the semantic folks. Uh, there is commercial interest in this technology. Um, We've been doing European research since 2002. We have maybe 35 or 40 completed projects. We have usually about five to seven projects in, pro in uh, currently in progress. So it's not such a big pipeline, but we are mostly devoted to commercial projects. In the industrial domains, we have worked with buildings, energy and electricity, transport and logistics, and data marketplaces. And now we also hope to enter the data spaces uh, domain. So I won't be explaining what is a knowledge graph. I just have some links here to a kind of a methodology that we have for building knowledge graphs. The typical steps that we take is research the data standards or data sets of the particular domain, uh, then uh, uh, do semantic data harmonization by first of all, finding ontologies that already exist in this domain or making our own, but more importantly, putting ontologies together, describing that either with RDF shapes or application profiles. So for me, semantic modeling is more than ontology engineering. You very rarely would work in a green field and you know, make your own ontology from zero. Other important steps are then, of course, how to represent the original data, semantic data, how to convert it, interlink it. Entity matching is an important step. And also very important, how to keep the knowledge graph up to date, right? Because if you just uh, convert some data and put it together and it's frozen in time, it will be obsolete that very moment. Now, data spaces, is a very important and very big initiative of the European Union. There's, there's at least four or five associations that are at least partly devoted to this kind of work. The European Union sees that as a very important enabler for digitizing industries and therefore improving both competitiveness, uh, getting to the Green Deal faster, and also um, mitigating COVID economic uh, negatives. And so there is a whole new program, the Digital Europe program devoted to data spaces, support, digital innovation hubs and so on. And basically this talk is motivated by a dialogue with my CEO. So I'm saying, well, now so we have to get into data spaces. It's gonna be very important. And he says, well, None of my clients have mentioned it. My clients are after knowledge graphs. So why should we participate in these organizations and devote people to this? And, and uh, basically, I think that data spaces can get a lot from basic clean data principles, knowledge graphs, and of course, vice versa. So semantic technologies are already heavily used in data spaces, but I think it is mostly for the metadata. 
So describing all of the participants, the data sets, the usage, the license rights, costs, contracts, and so on and so forth. But I think that very few data spaces use semantic data. So the, the business payroll, okay? You use metadata and fair, in other words, data sets that are described in a good way. You use that metadata to find the data, okay? But what if every provider in the same industry has used their own data format? And we have seen that in maybe two or three presentations today. We've seen that in the TNO presentation where you attach meaning to columns of a CSV. We've seen that in the material science presentation where uh, they get data, but they have to convert it to semantic data. So if you use in a data space semantics only to discover data, you're still going to be faced with the difficult problem of data integration, which we know is difficult and takes a lot of time and so on. And so I think even in industrial domains that already are stepping on semantics, for example, in electricity, I'll have a few slides later on, there is the common information model. It is defined in UML, but then the, the, the technical format coming out of it is RDFS in shackle shapes. Now, there are four uh, projects on European energy data spaces that started a few months ago. Shouldn't all of them demand that the data in those data spaces, at least th that part that concerns transmission, distribution, metering, and so on, that is covered by the semantic team, should also be smart. Now, another important thing I think is that linked data principles as Tim Berners-Lee inherited this week so many years ago, they're very simple, but they're very powerful because they say where you should be able to get the master version of a piece of, about an, of data about an entity, right? And so this gives you on demand up-to-date information. Whereas I think that currently, data spaces work more in a model of uh, data copying, data transfer, data exchange, right? But data, there are other ways to share data, not necessarily by taking big chunks of data and moving them around. And the very term space implies something where you have a harmonized version of data. But if you use connectors to fill up a space, how do you keep it up to date? How would you know which pieces of data are up to date and which ones need to be up updated? Um, I think this also has to do with uh, data locality. That's a big topic in uh, machine learning, efficient machine learning. You know, I would say that good chunks of edge and fog computing are devoted to this rather than transferring, for example, huge images and then doing uh, vision, machine vision on them. Let's try to do it where the data is and then only transmit the extracted information. And finally, the topic of data sovereignty is obviously very, very important. We've seen at least two strong present presentations on uh, data usage controls and policy enforcement and so on. But I think there is another more technical aspect to sovereignty and it is who masters a certain piece of data? And where is the master copy, the version of record of that piece of data? And so if we start thinking more in the direction of uh, distributed semantic repositories and federation and repositories that collaborate by exchanging small pieces of data, and the link data principles are exactly that. They say what is an entity, an entity is identified with the URL, you go to that URL, you get that piece which constitutes the entity. You don't have to wonder how big of a chunk of the data you need to transfer, and whether it's going to be up to date. And yes, such a distributed semantic infrastructure exists, or at least is in advanced stages of development, solid. Solid was mentioned in one of the presentations. It started as uh, social link data, so data sovereignty for the person. How can I ensure that my mug isn't sent by from Facebook to LinkedIn to track me and so on and so forth? But 
it is now seeing usage in commercial context. The founders' government, their e-government infrastructure is rapidly moving from XML to Solid. There are now uses of Solid in the architecture and engineering, uh, so building and infrastructure space. I'll say a bit about this later on. Now, the next few slides talk about my personal experience of uh, uptake of semantic technologies in various industries. So for product classifications, uh, they are, there is a series of ISO standards that are kind of outdated, something called onto ML, even though it has nothing to do with ontologies. But now there is movement towards at least some of these product catalog standards to be semantized. In smart manufacturing, I think one of the important standards, the admin shell, has, in addition to JSON, also has a semantic rendition, but there are also disadvantages in there. I'll talk about them in the next slide. I already mentioned the IC common information model is the foundation of a whole bunch of electricity standards. And especially in Europe, these are very important because of the single European energy market. So NSUI, the network of transmission system operators of Europe, expands on these models. Um, now skip oil and gas. In energy efficiency, there is a whole set of very, very elaborate ontologies that, and of course, this has also has to connect with buildings, with distributed energy resources. SARF is an important effort. It's kind of like an overarching ontology together with its extension, SARF for buildings, SARF for energy, but it is much lighter weight than those deep domain specific ontologies. In architecture and construction, this is currently a very hot topic, especially semantic asset <laughs> management of buildings and technical infrastructure. In smart cities and cadastral data, I guess most people know about the Juice Sparkle standard, so that also has a semantic rendition. And also in food and agriculture, the UN Food and Agriculture Organization has been working with semantics for maybe 10 or 12 years. So they, there is also this Godam, very huge network of semantic resources. Unfortunately, some of these industrial, industrial standards and industrial ontologies do not fully follow link data principles. And I'll give some examples of that. But first to mention a bit more details about product classifications and product catalogs. So, uh, there is a current effort to convert the E-class classification of products. It's a lot more than that. It's used by many, many industries. Uh, I think it's very strong in the, in the Dutch world. Um, then for some others, such as the European Union Common Procurement Vocabulary, this is captured in Wikidata. GS1 has a global product classification. I'll have another slide about GS1 in a bit. Okay. So um, I think this one is an important slide because Industry 4.0, well, at least this initiative that started in Germany, France has its own, but this one is nearing ISO standardization status. So Michel is a very important standard because it's kind of like an envelope where you can put a lot of other important information. Automation, ML, OPC, UA, Kuwada, PLM information, uh, E-class as well. But as you can see from the piece of turtle over here, it relies on copying data around. So you cannot just refer to a product class in E-class and say, this is what I'm talking about. You have to copy the information from E-class. E-class uses this here both thing. This thing is called an IRDI. IRDI. It comes from these older uh, ISO standards. Um, in electricity, I mentioned there's a whole series of standards and the, the master technical rendition of this, according to the standard, is RDFS and RDFXML. And now here's something strange. There is a global identification code for energy resources called the energy identification code. 
and it's used for market players for big infrastructures like power plants and transmission lines and substations and so on and yet when team data is being exchanged it doesn't use those urls based on the eic instead it's just seen as an import and export format so out of a SCADA system or some other electricity management system, it would spit out a big chunk of RDF XML in which you would have temporary grids. So in order to get an update on one particular transmission line that you're interested about, you'd have to ask that same source of data give me the whole chunk. And we've worked with StatNet in Norway. They tell us that the complete file of Norway, which has gotten to 900 megabytes of RDF XML, is being shut out back and forth many times a day between the TSO of Norway and the DSOs and across the border. And even cross-border transmission lines don't have URLs. I have a URL. I have many URLs, in fact, in VF, in ISNI, in whenever. And transmission lines that cost millions don't have a URL. <laughs> There are some new parts in development that are going to use JSON LD and, and Shaco and hopefully improve this thing. Now, about to feel Archer. So, in GS1, which is the global transport and logistics standardization organization, um, I won't talk about EPC because Phil has a whole presentation on this kind of ideas. And there is the web vocabulary, which is an extension of schema work with very, very detailed things. For example, which boat caught that piece of marine food that you want to purchase. Uh, we had on to text worked on EPCAS 2.0, the electronic protocol information system. So these are the object visibility events. Whenever a barcode is count or an RFID is read, an event is captured, sent somewhere, and this now has a semantic rendition, ontology shapes. And very important, digital GS1 digital links allow you to take a barcode and go resolve it against the web resolver and get either a product information sheet or link data describing that product or that container, that shipment, that consignment. In architecture and construction, there is a whole bunch of standards that are semantic uh, for digital semantic-based asset management, for uh, product catalogs in the construction industry, for even common data environments. This is a standard in development, and we hope to slant it towards the semantic direction. Okay. And this is also one of the first industries where solid is uh, starting to see use in an industrial setting. Uh, I have, I think, about three more, four more slides. So, <laughs> okay. So, uh, just to mention something here, what is polyglot modeling? Well, uh, when you work with industrial data, it's bound to have a bunch of standards describing this data. And then the question is, how can we semantize that in a, in a systematic manner? And you could work with UML, you could work with the ontology definition meta model of the OMG, but there's also now lighter weight approaches where domain models are described in a simple way, very often using YAML. And then out of this, you can generate a whole bunch of coordinated technical artifacts, like JSON schema, JSON LD context, and so on. And there is now a YAML LD working group being set up. As part of that, we are discussing whether these topics of polyglot modeling should be somehow brought to the fore and discussed. Final slide is that uh, this uh, work is uh, sponsored by this European project the food and safety market project which auto text is part of thank you mm -hmm.